Hey everyone. Last week while I was browsing through Godly for some inspiration, I found this amazing website featuring a stunning landing page animation. Inspired by what I saw, I decided to take on the challenge and recreate it myself using the GSAP timeline. So today I am going to walk you through the steps to achieve this sort of text split animation by playing around with the positions and using simple flexbox layout pattern. You will learn how to set up a sequence of timeline animations using GSAP. Let's get started without further delay. We'll start with our navigation in usual way, which will consist of three main components, the logo, the navigation links and the contact link. Next, we are setting up a container to house all our items. This container will be organized into three columns with the first and third columns each containing three items and the middle column holding the main item. For each item, we'll create a new div with the class name item and we will add another class name item side to those on the sides for custom styling. Each item will include both copy and an image. The copy will be enclosed within a div so we can animate its position along the y-axis using the parent div as a clip mask for this purpose. For the item images, we will use standard image elements. We'll duplicate this structure for all the items. Moving on to the text, we'll create another div with the class name header. The text will be split into two parts, each part holding four letters. Similar to the copy, we'll wrap these letters inside divs so we can employ the clip path for animating the letters within. With our base structure in place, it's time to proceed with adding some styling. Starting with the basics, we'll reset margins and paddings of all the elements while setting box sizing to border box. For the body, we will set width and height to 100% and disable scrolling with overflow hidden. We'll also define a font family and set a background color here. Images will be set to take full width and height with object fit cover to make sure they maintain their aspect ratio. Links will receive some generic styling including color, font size and weight for a clean appearance. The navigation will be positioned fixed spanning the full viewport width with some padding and have display flex to align the links in a column layout. Child elements within the nav will be given appropriate flex values to establish the desired column layout. The container 2 will match the body's width and height with overflow hidden and be set to display flex as well to organize items as a whole. Left and right columns will have equal widths using flex 1 and will also be set to display flex for a row alignment of the items. For individual items, I'll apply a relative position and a fixed height of 300 pixels, pushing them slightly downwards from the top. They'll be displayed in a column layout with flex to arrange the copy and image. The item copy will have padding and a height of 50 pixels. With two text elements inside, they'll be arranged in a column layout with flexbox again. A 
clip mask will be added to the copy wrapper to use it later for the animation of the text. I'll add some generic font styling to the paragraph text. Item images will have a flex value of 1 to occupy any remaining space with overflow hidden to keep images confined to their wrappers. The middle column will be deferred by a wider width of 300 pixels and set to display flex to align its items. The main item will be styled similarly to the other items but adjusted to align with the column's width of 300 pixels and have a fixed height. For the main item's image, I'll scale it down slightly and apply a clip mask for the initial hidden state. The header will be also absolutely positioned, pushed up from the bottom, covering 100% width and set to display flex. Inside containers of the header will have a relative position with flex 1 to ensure equal width and horizontal centering. Letters will be initially scaled down, prepared for the scale animation. I'll push the items to the left and right more to start closer together. Each letter will receive styling for width, font size and weight centered inside their wrappers using Flexbox and have a clip mask for the text animation. With our structure style, we are ready to move on to adding animations. We'll start with an event listener to set the initial position of our text elements as soon as the page loads. Our first step involves moving the nav upwards out of view, preparing it for the slide in animation. We'll also position both the header letters and the item copy text behind their respective clip mask by adjusting their Y values. Next up, we establish default duration and easing for all animations to ensure consistency. We'll create a timeline with a slight initial delay of 0.5 seconds to kick things off. Our first animation reveals the header letters with a stagger effect for a dynamic entrance. Simultaneously, we'll start to separate the header elements, moving them further apart. As this unfolds, we'll animate the main images clip path property to create a revealing effect. To position the header items correctly, we'll move it back to its starting place, applying a scale of 1 to restore the original font size. We'll also scale up the main image to fill the entire space of the middle column. As the main image grows, we'll animate the clip paths of other item images, gradually revealing them with stagger. All the while, we'll be moving the entire header downwards, creating a cohesive movement throughout the animation. To wrap up, we'll reveal the item copy with stagger and adding a final touch by revealing the navigation as well. And there you have it. You can see how by breaking down the animations into small parts, you can build a series of timeline animations that bring our page to life. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. 
कैच यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो